So here we go again. Another moron that can't deal with reality. I've always been people who were lighter skin and straight hair from, from 60,000 60 years ago. Always. Always. Are you seriously trying to use E1, B1, B1 to try to make a case for a genetically united and exclusively black the Africa? The species as a, a proper entity originated, but at some point around 50 to 60,000 years ago, some people started to leave, others stayed on in Africa. Your ancestors started to leave around 45,000 years ago, and they took a route up through the Middle East. And again, this is looking at genetic markers, tiny changes that occur from time to time as you pass on your DNA to the next generation. At, at this time, we were all hunters and gatherers, right? We were hunters and gatherers living in, in the, the savannas of eastern Africa, hunting gazelle and so on. We're in the middle of an ice age, and some of your ancestors started to move up into the Middle East. And then from what you've told me, some of them decided, let's not hunt and gather anymore, let's stay put, let's grow our own food where we are, and that allowed them to establish villages and have more children. That's right. So from the Middle East, some of them headed east into Central Asia, populated ultimately the Americas and so on. Yours stayed put, your ancestors stayed put, and around 10,000 years ago, they made this conscious decision to settle down, stay in one place, and grow their food rather, the, rather than hunting and gathering it. And your ancestors have a lineage we call J. Okay, it's very common throughout the Middle East, also found in North Africa. It's also found in some European populations, particularly people who have Eastern European Jewish ancestry. All right, and, and let's compare that now to Katie's story, okay. right? I think we're, we're sort of similar, aren't we, in some ways, in terms well, of our migration patterns? everybody starts off in Africa, Yeah, absolutely, and your ancestors also moved up into the Middle East around forty-five to 50,000 years ago. You are a member of a super clan, or a super haplogroup we call N. Of course. <laughs> And then this clan began to sort of split off, and your ancestors ended up in Europe during the worst part of the last ice age. Times are getting really rough, ice sheets are coming down from the north, and your ancestors had to move down into refugia when the weather turns bad, you head for the beach. Down in southern Europe, um, Spain, Italy, the Balkans, and so on, worst part of the last ice age, and after 15,000 years ago, as the glaciers started to retreat, they moved back up into the rest of Europe. So it's a very common European lineage, haplogroup K, we call it. Okay, mm -hmm. and Anne has an interesting background as well. Right. She also starts off in, in East Africa, just like everybody else, and just like Katie, moved up into the Middle East around 45 to 50,000 years Sister. ago. Sister. <laughs> Part of that same super clan, the N super clan, most of which went into to Europe, but some of them, a tiny little branch, headed over toward East Asia. Mm. And in addition to being N, you're actually a subtype of N known as N9A, which mm. is common in Eastern Siberia, Japan, China, and so it's consistent with what I think you know about your, your mother's It is very family. consistent, but it's also interesting because, you know, it seems to me that uh, someone, we have so many other things in us, and you've picked sort of one. Right. But, but you could actually take my background and find other things exactly, as well. Exactly, exactly. So this is a single line of descent. It's about your mother's mother's mother mm. and so on. And of course, it's a tiny fraction of your total DNA. Exactly. And one of the things we want to do during the course of this project is start looking at other regions of DNA to fill in the story. Right. Okay. And now for Al. Did, we didn't travel too far. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did. You did. But you illustrate exactly why we're doing this project. So again, you originated in Africa, just like everybody else, and your ancestors stayed most mostly within Africa, probably moved up into northeastern Africa, and they had a marker which occurred called YAP. Again, this is one of those rare changes that occurs from time to time. Distinguishes your clan, your lineage. You're a member of haplogroup E, we call it. Some of uh, the members of haplogroup E moved up into the Middle East. Yours turned towards Central and Western Africa. Mm -hmm. And today, most people who are African American are actually members of haplogroup E. But they're a member of a subset or a subclan within E, which you're not a member of. Mm -hmm. We don't know that much about the details of your particular subclan. Clan, but oh, that's one of the things. Sense. It's one of the things we want to find out in, in the project, and this is part of the reason why I was over in Africa last week collecting samples in Chad. E1, B1, B1, to try to make a case for a genetically united and exclusively black. Get that junk out of here! Come on, boys, scram! I'll give you the idea in a nutshell. B A B B E B B I B B I B O B O. I'll give you the correct demonstration. Cutie pie, pound those horse teeth. B A B B E B B I Vicky by B O Bo Vicky by Bo B U Boo Vicky by Bo Boo C A C E C C I Sicky Sai C O So Sicky Sai So C U Sue Sicky Sai So Sue Get the idea, girls? Well, I see you're trying to claim idioms as well. Wrong. 
There is no evidence of the ancestors of the Dravidians or the Adiwasi. Descending from any migration out of Africa during historic times, as geneticist doctors Chabe, Mitzpalu, Phillips, and Kibisi will state, we concluded that both Indo-European and Dravidian-speaking populations of India share largely the same pool of mitochondrial DNA lineages that has evolved in C2 in South Asia since the out of Africa migration of anatomically modern humans some 50 to 70,000 years ago. In southern part of India, a particular god is being worshipped by the local people. His name is uh, Murugan. He is always on top of the hill. And you go back to uh, Eastern Africa, even today, where more than 25 tribals worship a god which is on the hill his name is Murungu. And obviously there's no connection between these two people over 7,000, 8,000, 10,000 years. <laughs> so I'm trying to bridge the gap. There is a distinct and clear connection between the ancient India and the ancient Africa. And that is where I want to go back to the Indus Valley Civilization. I think most of you would have heard that or, or maybe would have studied in school which is as ancient as, as the uh, Egypt Nile Valley Civilization. Okay. I want to confess that I'm not a historian. I'm not an archaeologist, uh, a sociologist. I'm a good-for-nothing engineer. Okay. So, I'm not trying to uh, uh, go into the details, archaeological details. I will leave that to Brother Renoko Rashidi. Now, these are some of the dollars or untouchables today. Black people with African features straight to wavy hair. I've had three tours to India, three educational tours. On one occasion, I went over there for 21 days by myself. Had all kinds of adventures. And this is a young black woman from South India. Now, you don't see any of these people on television, do you? Next. This is a tribal woman. She's from a group called the Banda, B-O-N-D-A, from East India, in a state called Orissa. Now, she looks like she could be Maasai mm -hmm. from Kenya. Mm -hmm. Next. This is how they worship God. They worship God in the form of a black female. Now, that's deep. There is no evidence of the ancestors of the Dravidians or the Adivasi descending from any migration out of Africa during historic times. Because, uh, the sequencer stops in the middle of a run, you're going to lose all your data, so you have to make sure you have power the whole time. And it's in here, in this room, protected from the environment. Now the, the sieve bit is actually a chemical matrix that's inside of this tiny little tube, less than a millimeter in diameter inside. This is what the DNA is going to be forced into by an electrical charge from one end of the sieve to the other. Each one of these sequences looking for the tiny difference that distinguishes the coastal marker, the thing that leads us to Australia. So it's going to take quite a while, a bit tedious. Sometimes I wish I'd done something other than science. <laughs> If the marker's here, it'll give itself away as a tiny spelling mistake in just one of the four letters that spell out the story of our past. A-C-G-T. I'm searching for just one accidental change in a sequence that's six billion long. From C to T. Is that it? Yes. A misprint of just one letter, but just enough hopefully, to change history. I've got some really exciting news. Well, I'm good. Let's okay. take a look at Let's, it, I'll show yeah. you. If you look at this yeah. particular position, see that change yes. from C to T? T, yes. That's the marker. We've done it. This tiny spelling mistake occurred around 2,000 generations ago. It proves 
that our African ancestors did pass through here on their way to Australia. In the end, one man from a small village west of Madurai had the answer. It had been passed down to him from the very first humans to set foot in India. And here he is. One microscopic change rewrites the history of an entire continent. And that Inhabitants feels pretty awesome. are the original creators of the Indus Valley Civilization, which is also called Mohanjodhara and Harappa, or Harappan Civilization, was created by the black man. People who came from Africa. You want to fuck with me, then it's face to face. Or don't waste my time, you waste the space. The league of one, you'll never be in the league Cause you're weak and dumb You had seven days of fame, now your week is done I bring detox to and we gon' see them run Challenge you to beef, man, you'll never see them come They talk shit, but when I see them face to face They say the beef is done So when your mouth on the mixtape kisses Well, I'm getting pleasure by the mouth on your missus After we done, she asked for hugs and kisses